Hello everybody, my name is Provis and welcome to more Planet Zoo. You know we've been playing a lot of really stressful games on the channel as of late, and I thought to myself I could really use a bit of a break from that. What's something fun and chill that I can play that still sparks some creativity and offers a bit of a challenge? And I came up with Planet Zoo. I do like this game quite a bit. I was a huge fan of Zoo Tycoon when I was a kid, and in my opinion, Planet Zoo is the spiritual successor to that franchise. Very, very solid game. We did cover this back when it first released. Hello! Uh, but since then, I think three new species packs have been released to the markets and I reached out to the devs and they were kind enough to give me all the latest content so a big thank you to them for that so we're gonna go ahead and start by playing with one of those new species packs based around Australia now, Australia of course has some incredibly weird critters down under so I'm looking forward to building a zoo that is mostly centered around them I think each species pack only offers like five or six new species though we can't build an entire zoo around it but it can be the center folks that is what we are going to do let's go to challenge and select the grasslands of Australia. And I'm gonna name this one the Kanga Zoo. I think that is a very clever name for a uh, for an Australian zoo. All right, let's give it a go. Okay, here we are. Mm, doesn't quite look like what I expect Australia to look like, but that's probably fine. We'll give it a go anyway. All right, so there are a handful of things that we need to set up pretty early on, uh, namely starting with some basic staff facilities. We know we're going to need all of this just to run the zoo, let alone actually build out any habitat. So let's start with that. Now, the game wants you to build all of these. You don't really need that many to start off. It's A-OK -okay to start with something like a trade center and a staff room and a research center, a quarantine and a keeper hut and so on. But before we do even any of that, let's go ahead and start setting up some pathing. Now, if you've ever seen Planet Zoo, it's by the same developer. Uh, so, sorry, uh, by the same developers as Planet Coaster. So, uh, a lot of the basic mechanics as far as building out a park are pretty much the same as what you would have seen in a game like that. Also very fun, by the way. I highly recommend that. So, let's go ahead and grab some more pathing. And we're going to kind of build just an administrative staff area off in this general vicinity to kind of start me off. And I like having needlessly curved road just because I like the asymmetry. I don't like being especially grid-like if I can avoid it, you know what I mean? Now, let's set up a trade center. This is necessary if we want to uh, start buying and selling some creatures that I can add into my exhibits. Uh, I would like to get a research center. It's not strictly necessary at the beginning of the game, but we are going to want it early on, so we'll go ahead and place one of those. Also, we'll need to quarantine just in case uh, to make sure that our new animals don't get others sick. So we'll go ahead and do that. And I wouldn't mind also having a staff room kind of early on, just so my staff are able to rest up and take good care of themselves. Very important to have a happy staff, right? Okay, that should be enough just to get me going for now. We'll place down keeper huts and other stuff later. Now, if we want to place down some exhibits, first I think we need to figure out what kind of creature we actually want. So let's go to animal trading. Now, I don't believe that there is a way to filter based off of geography, which I think is very unfortunate. But if we scroll down, I'm sure I'll recognize something like dingoes. There we go. Dingoes are, of course, very Australian. Kind of classic animal right there. So we'll play with these guys to start us off for our first exhibit. Now, first, let's check the Zoopedia and actually make sure that I know what I'm getting myself into, what kind of requirements we're looking at. This is a vulnerable population of species, so it's not exactly in danger, but it's not common either, which means breeding might work well well for me and I can release some into the wild and get a lot of accolades for the zoo. That sounds pretty good. Natural habitat, yes they are native to Australia, they like living in desert grasslands. Get a little bit of a sense of what kind of habitat requirements they have. They do look for a lot of space, it looks like. That could become a bit of a challenge for me. Uh, here's something important, group size. Give us some idea how many we're going to need. So 2 to 12 for a family pack of dingoes. And interestingly enough, they do have both an alpha male and an alpha female, but they are monogamous. So if you want to maximize our uh, mating and breeding potential, we'll probably want to have to have a one-to-one -one ratio of males and females. Maybe three males and three females to start off, or just two and two, I guess, could be fine. Yeah, we might play with some of that. So let's go ahead and start, um, well, let's see, we want to get a habitat right now. Let's go ahead and start replacing some pathing so I can figure out what I'm actually going to um, I'm actually going to set up for my exhibit, and then we'll go ahead and import in the animals. I'll reduce some pathing size, uh, maybe a little bit larger than this, and let's go ahead and build out kind of a nice big circular area so that people can easily see all the dingoes. Here we go. It might be a little bit big to start off, but if they have such large space requirements for each individual dingo and we eventually want them to breed, it's going to get very crowded very quickly. 
So we gotta be ready for that. What kind of a wall do we wanna use? I think brick. Brick sounds like a lot of fun. It's super duper swanky. Let's go ahead and set up down along here and just kind of build right along the pathing. Now we have to think through where we want to place some windows so people can see the dingoes. Preferably a little bit further off the beaten path so people don't kind of crowd the area and it gets harder to manage the traffic, right? So right over here should be fine. Let's place down some glass and we'll set up a few viewing areas kind of right along here. There we go. Something like this should be pretty good. Of course, it did cost us a lot of money to build an exhibit this big and elaborate, but that's gonna be just fine. Now we also need to set down some sort of a habitat gate. If I were to set one up right along here, that should be easy enough for our future zookeepers to come on in here and drop off some food and other such important things. So that will work just fine. And we'll be able to kind of beautify this area up and place down some plants and such later. So, okay. So that's going to be one basic exhibit. I'll need to get some dingoes and such in just a moment. But first, let's make sure that we take care of the rest of our basic staff needs. I'm going to set up a small little mosaic path right along over here with the expectation that I'm going to want to have my zookeeper or somebody similar set up over here, just as another little continuation of the uh, administrative zone. Let's go to facilities and make sure we place down one of those keeper huts. Keeper huts are where your zookeepers are going to prepare, uh, prepare all of the food. Having one close to all of the different uh, entrances to the exhibits is a very, very helpful thing. So we want to have that. I'll also need to get a workshop and other stuff later. But for now, I think this will do just fine. So let's go ahead and hire up some staff that can take care of our basic needs. We need to get a caretaker to clean the place up. We need to get a keeper to actually take care of the animals. We need a mechanic to manage the walls. We can avoid security for the moment. Uh, and a vet would be nice so I can do some research and also care for the animals if it turns out that they are sick. So, let's go to the market and find some dingoes. Ooh, cassowaries. Those guys are from Australia, right? Well, that in like New Guinea or something, I think. But yeah, we'll get some of those. Dingoes first, though. Dingoes first. So let's go ahead and adopt a quick male and a female and a male and a female. Do we want more than four to start us off? I kind of want to get six. So let's go ahead and get all of you guys. There we go. Whole bunch of dingoes. Now let's go to our storage and send them to the zoo and drop them off in that habitat. There we go. Everyone is assigned, which means our caretakers and vets and such should automatically run off to the trade center and grab the dingoes out of their boxes and drag them into the site. Right? And once they get in here, it's going to be a little bit easier for me to figure out what kind of stuff they want. Um, that said, we could probably we could probably go ahead and start making a few educated guesses. But I'll wait. They're right here. They're right here. Come on, little dingoes. Boink. Hello. The box suddenly gets bigger. It's bigger on the inside. It's like a TARDIS. All right. If we actually want to turn on the camera right here, we can kind of see the dingoes. Oh, this is a little... Un it's Cerberus. There we go. Once again, I just have to say I love the graphics of Planet Zoo. The detail in each individual animal is just superb. Fantastic stuff. Okay, so Theodore the Dingo, my test dummy, what do you want? Well, first off, you want to have a shelter, and I can probably arrange that. Let's go to Habitat. And to make this a little bit easier, we can go ahead and uh, filter based off of dingoes, just to make sure that whatever we toss in here is something they are actually going to want. We could give them some bedding and stuff. That's not a bad idea. But I do think getting a pretty large shelter somewhere out over here wouldn't be a bad call, just because it gives them some nice shade to hide in if they want. We'll do that. Could also toss down some of that bedding um, so they have a place to lay down if they want. Let's say maybe out over here-ish. We'll do a couple of them probably like this. Maybe another shelter later if we want. Let's see. Nope, they're pretty satisfied with that. They got a place to lay. They like that. Okay, and then as far as terrain, um, we've got way too much long grass for their tastes. They would really like to see some more short grass and soil. Well, some short grass kind of closer to viewing areas would probably make a bit of sense. We'll go ahead and drag that down at least a bit, and also maybe a little soil, just kind of mix things out. Remember that they do like grasslands, but they like deserts too, so a little bit less uh, obscured vision and stuff would make them a bit happier. Here's some more short grass, just kind of toss this in there, there we go. That seems reasonably well balanced, and maybe a teensy little bit of rock here and there as well. Perfect, good texturing, okay. So that meets their terrain needs just fine, and now we can move on to the environment. What do they want? Well, they don't actually care about getting a lot of plants, apparently, which is okay, but I like tossing in plants anyway. So let's go to nature, 
And once again, we are going to filter, uh, in this case, by grassland and desert, and also continent to make sure that we get the right types of native plants that make them feel at home and comfortable. So we'll separate to Oceana, and then also grassland and desert. So all of these plants, most likely, will end up working just fine for me. Okay, there we go. Nice little exhibit, and all the dingoes are going to get dropped off. What else do you guys need? Let's see. Enrichment? Well, unfortunately, I don't have any ways of enriching the lives of our dingoes quite yet, so we'll have to come back to that. Everything else seems okay, and they're quite happy with their social situation right now because they have a large enough family group that they're doing A-OK. -okay. So we do need to also make sure they have the ability to get some nutrition. Uh, let's see, a large food tray would probably be sensible, and we'll place it probably off over here close-ish to the um, to the zookeeper's entrance. And I would also like to get a quick water pump or something, maybe out over here close to the shelter where they can get some shade. That should be enough to get them going. Okay, dingoes are done and ready to go. And already our guests are entering the zoo. Beautiful. Well, if there are going to be guests, that means they are here for an educational experience, and we can provide. If we go to facilities and to our viewing devices and speakers, one of the fun things about Planet Zoo is you can place down little signboards and information kiosks and stuff, and people can learn things. And the more they feel educated, the more impressed they are with your zoo. And therefore, uh, they will drop off donation funds and stuff, which is something I very, very much like to have. It's one of the best ways of making money in the game. So, we're going to go ahead and place some of those down, especially at any of the viewing areas. Actually, we need educational boards, not exhibit boards. My mistake there. Okay, we'll place down Dingo here, and there we go. You can see little details like that showing off information. I've always thought that's a fun little touch they add into the game right there. Also, I placed down some little speakers over here, which we could turn on to also just broadcast information about our exhibits. Which is one way of people learning things without having to actually, you know, read or anything. You know, engaging their brain and all that. Uh, do have to be careful not to have these guys overlap in their range, though, because otherwise people might get a little confused. But this should be okay to kind of get us started. Lovely. Okay. So, we have our first fully functioning exhibit and some happy little animals. Love it. Now we just need to do that again. Here we go, something a little bit smaller like this should be just fine for what I have in mind next. I think we should go ahead and place down some cassowaries. So let's see if we can find some of those guys. Now they're not just called cassowaries, it's like southern cassowary or something like that. There it is. We've only got one named Rihanna. I like that name, it's a very good name. Um, we're gonna go ahead and adopt you. I'm hoping to find a male at some point. Let's, um... Can I actually click on you and uh, see if I can find your Zoopedia article real quick? N no, I messed that up. Hang on, where's my where's my Zoopedia? There it is, Southern Cassowaries. What do we got here? So they like to live either isolated or in at least a group of one male and one female. So they'll be fine on their own. Rihanna's okay, but getting her a male would be kind of nice. These are of least concern. I didn't realize these guys had actually pretty good populations here. What do you know? Looks like a very exotic animal, right? But these guys do live in Australia, uh, only in the very eastern sections along over here, though. Mostly they live up in New Guinea, I believe. So, okay. They don't require nearly as much space as the dingoes, which is why I built them a smaller exhibit. And they do have a tropical environment, not a grasslands or desert environment. Good to know. All right, once the cassowary is ready to go, we'll go ahead and toss them into the exhibit and go ahead and tailor it to their needs. Oh, and while our workers are doing that, let's make sure we throw some of those donation boxes I was talking about up here. Uh, something like this should be fine. We'll place it kind of close to some education areas. Just because I think that's when they are the most giving and generous. We'll do something like over here, and then we'll do another one over here. I don't know. Plenty of opportunities to give me your money, okay? That's what's so dang important. We'll go ahead and toss one right here as well. And just make sure there's no excuse. Let's make sure there's an ATM right by the entrance. And I wouldn't mind having an information kiosk as well. Can we do something like that? There it is. Planet Zoo Info Center right along here. Seems perfect. We could also probably give them some small toilets or something, or even large ones. I don't know. I'm not too picky. Just a nice big toilet so that everyone's going to be taken care of for the future. Perfect. That'll work just fine. And actually, now that we've dropped off all the dingoes, another thing I should do is start working on research for our veterinarians. So let's go ahead and assign Cleo Lemons to work on researching dingoes. We'll find out some of the basic things that make them happy, get some extra enrichment in their lives, and happier animals will make for happier guests. Here we go, Rihanna has been delivered. 
Such a weird bird right there. Okay, what do you want? Well, first off, you do desire a shelter. I'm not sure why that was filled in for a moment, but it does not deserve to be. Let's swap out our filter for the southern cassowary, which should be right here, and make sure you get some place to live. Um, there's only going to be a couple of you, so you probably don't need a very large shelter. Something pretty basic, like down over here would probably be enough. We'll do this, and I'll also give you like a small-ish little bedding ground over here in case you want to take a little nap kind of in the middle. Does that meet your needs? Uh, almost. We can place another small one, let's say, right there. There we go. Plenty of places to lay their pig honking heads, I don't know, if they so desire. Let's see. Too much long grass. Got it. Not nearly enough soil. Got it. We can fix some of that. Let's go ahead and place a fair bit more soil down, and also some shorter grass, kind of like this. That should be good. You would like a little bit of sand. Just a little bit of sand. There we go. For a tropical creature, this isn't quite what I think I was expecting. And then maybe just a smidge of rock and other such things. Okay. This all seems pretty good. What else do you want for your environment? Now, you do want coverage, and that makes sense. You do, after all, live in a somewhat tropical environment. So let's get rid of the grasslands and oceana. And swap that out for tropical and see what else we can place down. Lots of banana palms, bird's nest ferns, cordyline plants, coconut palms, Australian fan palms. This sounds like something we need a bunch of. There we go. You can't really tell at night because, you know, the colors are all kind of blackened out by the lack of a sun. But uh, I think this is going to look very, very nice once it is done. So does that meet all your needs? You should have plenty of coverage now. There we go. But of course, we are still lacking in the enrichment. All right. But we are also running a little bit low on money. So we're going to have to do something about that. Um, one very cheap thing we could do that would probably get a little bit of extra guest attention while uh, not breaking the bank would be to place down, let's say, a basic exhibit. An exhibit wouldn't be a bad idea. We can place one kind of close up to the front, kind of get the guests excited as they are coming up over here. Yeah, that seems fine. So we're going to go to small animal exhibits, and I'm not going to try to get anything too crazy, but just something like this should be fine-ish. It's going to make the roads look weird, but we'll toss some bushes in there or something, and it'll look fine. Whoops, that's not what I meant to do. Oh, well, I think that'll be fine. So let's go ahead and take a look at our individual small animals that we could bring in, and I don't... Well, nothing's apparently showing up here. Um, I don't think that there are going to be any um, Australian-based small critters that we could buy, which is unfortunate, but not a big deal. Um, I'm not sure why nothing's showing up. There's no species available. It's a completely empty market. Seems a little weird, but okay, we'll come back to that. All right, we are a little low on cash right now, but I think that'll solve itself as we get some more donations and also sell various different goods. I did forget to set down some education, so let's make sure that we don't forget that. It's very, very important to have a successful zoo capable of educating your guests. You know, you want to make them feel like they come away with more knowledge than when they came in or something like that. It's very, very good. All right, so we'll do this probably to start. I haven't set up any paths on this side yet, and we'll go ahead and place down a quick speaker right over there. And let's set that to the southern cassowary and increase the range. So anyone who is looking through the glass is going to learn something, whether you like it or not. You can't plug your ears, even if you can't close your eyes. Perfect. And of course, we need to make sure that we aren't forgetting to place down one of those lovely donation boxes right along there. Perfect. Okay. Looks pretty good. Got to keep checking the uh, market once in a while, looking for some more uh, southern cassowaries, trying to find a male. Just so that Rihanna has somebody to live with, maybe we would be able to get some breeding going on there. I don't know. So there we go. Now the small animal market is up and running. What do we want? Well, we can get a really cool looking Titan beetle. <laughs> uh, sure, okay. Also, let's see an iguana. Iguanas are cool. People like iguanas, right? I like iguanas. You know, I actually found an iguana in Arizona once. Crazy, right? But there actually was an iguana in a, um, in a bush uh, close to my house. We assume it was somebody's pet that they lost or abandoned for God knows why, but we took it home and we named it Floyd. At least until we could find someone else to take care of it. Anyway, so somewhere in here should be a little iguana. There it is! Ah, check that out! Again, I just love the little details you get in Planet Zoo. The fact that you can look in an exhibit and find a tiny creature like that is so stinking cool! Alright, let's see. We're going to go ahead and set this up over here with the iguana. Now, of course, the iguana also has needs. We cannot neglect that, so let's go to the exhibit. Take a look here. Layout, they would like some enrichment. We don't have any of that yet. Climate, however, definitely need to change. So let's raise the temperature by at least a couple of degrees, 77 for now, and lower the humidity down to, let's say, 60%. 
and see if this helps. That's pretty good as far as humidity. Would like it to be a teeny bit warmer though. So we'll do something like this. There we go, nice and comfortable, okay. Uh, small exhibits are very easy to take care of. They're pretty small to set up. They're very cheap. The animals are pretty easy to make happy. Doesn't get quite the same level of excitement and stuff, but I mean, it's not half bad. And if you can get a little bit of enrichment, you know, just a happier iguana. Perfect. Okay, and everything is looking just fine and dandy. We are going to have to beautify the crud out of this park at some point. Oh, I just realized I forgot to actually get some food trays and stuff over here. That's kind of important. So let's go ahead and say, um... Probably a small water bowl over, let's say, along here, close to where they will be able to sleep, and then a large food bowl over here. Okay. That should be fine. We'll set that up and make sure that our cassowaries are okay. Hey, let's take a look at this gift. We did finish with adopting two different habitat species, so I get a little extra cash. Thank you so much for that. And our profits have gone up a lot, too, so we get even more money. Thank you. Just waiting on some uh, guest numbers, and we will be able to finish that one out. Cool. Vet research is complete for the dingoes. We learned about some basic enrichment. Nice. Now, our, um, our vet could continue working with the dingoes, but I'm going to swap over to the cassowary just to get something, a little bit of enrichment, and then we will focus on one thing at a time. So what do we learn exactly about you dingoes? What do you like for enrichment? Let's see. And there's species enrichment. That's not it. Research status. Blood scent markers. Really? It's just, it's gonna be a little marker that smells like blood and that makes you happy? Okay, you know, whatever floats your boat. Guess I can't be too upset by that. Let's go to species once again, find the dingo. And we're gonna place down at least a couple of these blood scent markers, maybe one over here, and one down over, um, kind of out in the open like this should be fine, and then maybe one more kind of out over here, there we go. Does that deal with some of your enrichment needs? What the 31%? It's not exactly enough, is it? But, I mean, it's progress. I'll take what I can get. How about another blood marker over here? Okay, we're up to 34%. I think that's probably the best we can get with this type of enrichment. We're gonna have to learn something else first before we'll be able to go much further than that. But there we go. Okay, and it looks like this dingo actually really does like that uh, blood scent marker. What's going on with you over here? Oh, he's looking at it. Things looks good. Oh, he's giving it a good old sniff. Does this make them enraged or anything? Do they get, like, super bloodthirsty? Gosh, I hope not. That would not exactly be great for me, would it? Eh, well, they seem to be doing okay. It, it likes it. It definitely likes what it's getting there. Wow. Pretty dingo. Very pretty dingo. Connor? I like you, Connor. You're good. Let's see. Before I forget, there are some other things we are going to need. For example, we do need to get a workshop. This is important for our mechanics so they can get the materials they need to repair walls if they ever are looking a little bit questionable. It also would be wise for me to have um, some animal surgery. Uh, let's see. There it is. Veterinary surgery. Yeah. We'll set up one over here as well. Um, probably... Ooh, this tree is kind of right in the way, ain't it? Eh, we'll place it over here. Sure. There we go. I'm completely out of cash until something is fixed, but at least now I have all of my basics set up and we are going to be able to take care of animals no matter what is going to happen. So we just sit back, and we get a bit of cash. Oh, also, we keep checking to find out if there's more cassowaries. There's females! That's not what I'm looking for, though. Not what I'm looking for. Okay, we have finished a little bit more research for the cassowaries. That's great. Let's swap over to the iguana. Then we'll focus on one or the other, probably just the dingoes, to get us going. So, going to habitat. Let's do the same thing as before. We're going to sort by species, because that makes my life easier. What do we find out you like? I think it's this one right here, the herb scent marker. Okay, so we're just creating some really nice smells for you guys, apparently. That's fine, that's fine. We'll just place down a couple of these guys down over, I don't know, here. That should be all right. Okay, there we go. Takes care of the cassowary. Iguana research is done. Now let's swap over just to making the dingoes happy, because I think that's going to be one of my big attractions right there. Lots and lots of dingoes. You can see that people do like using the paths over the walls to kind of see down and see what exactly is going on down there. Uh, iguanas. Floyd, I'm just going to name you Floyd. What's going on over here? Let's uh, add in, say, a long, wide trunk. There it is. Add that in there, and now your layout has improved. Adding in more doesn't do me any good until we get some more enrichment. But now we have an extra happy iguana. Welfare is 95%. Not bad. A dingo's about to have a baby. Well, that's good, um, because baby animals uh, draw lots of zoo attention. Another thing I forgot to do, actually, is to start our mechanic research as well as the veterinary research. And check this out. There's actually Australian-themed stuff. 
Dude, I want to learn about Australian-themed stuff. Cool. Let's make the Kangazoo look super Aussie. That's the word, right? Yes. Oh, a little baby dingo has been born somewhere. Hang on, let's take a look at the exhibit. Find the animals. And where's the little baby dingo? Harry is its name. Oh, little baby Howie. Where are you? There you are. You look pretty big for a baby. Good lord, they grow up so fast. We did just learn some new enrichment. It looks like they would like to play with some sort of ball. Oh, okay. Well, I can probably arrange that. Let's place down, let's say, a, a nice colorful ball right along over here to please the guests and maybe another small ball over um let's say right along over here there we go couple of little toys for you guys to play with does that make your enrichment better it does i think the only way to make things better for them now is actually to give them some sort of food enrichment if we do a drop down right here we can see yeah so they have plenty of toys they're quite happy with that but they do want to have something to play with while they eat their food you know like a kind of a, a, a little clever contraption that they have to they have to work at in order to get the little seeds out or whatever it's going to be. I don't know what dingoes eat, aside from babies. So um, we'll have to research some of those next, but that's about as close as we can get, and it definitely makes a big difference. More vet research done for the dingoes. Okay, can we just take a look at this directly and see what's going on? An education bonus. Oh, that's certainly helpful. Yeah, uh, if we can get to level four and such, we're going to go ahead and teach people how to learn more about dingoes, or at least educate people better on dingoes. Also, we'll unlock some food enrichment. Good. Fun facts and breeding research. Nice. It does seem to indicate that there actually is some food enrichment. Is there? Well, hang on. Let's actually take a quick look at the habitat here. Um, specifically looking for food. Sometimes this gets all messed up. What about a food cage? Is that the sort of thing that we think that dingoes would like? Could be. Makes sense to me. No, that's not it at all. It's something down here called a dog ball. A dog ball? Well, so far, I'm not seeing any dog balls anywhere. Uh, maybe it's under enrichment. There it is. Dog ball. This is food? All right, take it. There we go. We got a special ball for you. That means your food enrichment should have gone up. It did. 14%. Oh, whoopty freaking do. Okay, we'll learn about a lot more. Don't you worry. We did get an inspection report telling us how well we are doing. Cleanliness is fantastic, and overall the habitats are pretty solid. What we're lacking in is proper education, but that will come, don't you worry, that will come as we continue to do our research. Okay, well I think this is a pretty good start for our zoo. There's a lot more beautification that I need to do, but first we need to get some serious cash on hand. And also I need to set up uh, probably some... Um, some concessions or something, because the longer people stay here, the more money they are going to want. What is going on over here? Is this thing smoking? Somebody vandalized my habitat information. How dare you replace that? Gosh, no wonder my education sucks. We've got vandals! All right, well, we'll come back to that later. Thank you all very much for watching. I do hope that you are looking forward to a very brief series in Planet Zoo. If so, then I would ask you to hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. <laughs>